Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, this is Hoya Locker Room, episode 87. Um, we're here today to celebrate, to welcome our new head coach, Ed Cooley. We have an illustrious group. Um, we have Dwayne Bryant. We have Mark Guerrero. We have Jerome Williams. Reggie Williams will be joining us hopefully momentarily. I'd like to apologize for the late start, um, but to be quite honest, we were we were chopping it up beforehand, and it was uh, it's probably will be the best part of the episode that uh, that'll stay on the cutting room floor. Um, but uh, we we felt it necessary um, uh, for um, former players, former alumni to uh, to uh, you know informally or formally welcome the coach. Um, so that's the purpose of the episode. As I always say. I'm at the beginning that annoys my uh, co-host. This is going to be a fabulous episode. Probably it's going to be my best. It's probably going to be our best episode. Um, so with that intro, um, I'll turn it over to Markham to say a few words, and then we'll we'll dive right in. The uh, only thing I have to say is that it's a, a good day for Georgetown. Um, I, I, I think very well deserved excitement is around I, and I apologize for my voice and I'm dealing with the flu. Uh, we're gonna keep get through it. Uh, let's hop in. Uh, we always like to start off the episode with asking the guests how you ended up in Georgetown. So for everybody, uh, what's your story? How'd you end up on the hilltop? Ryan, want to jump in with that? Uh, sure. Um, you know, like like most of us, uh, recruited to play basketball by by Craig Ashrick and then later Big John, and uh, you know from New Orleans, so I already had two former AAU teammates and and a Louisiana legend and uh, Perry McDonald, and then uh, Jonathan Edwards and Jaron Jackson. Uh, Jaron Jackson and, and Jonathan Edwards were both former AAU teammates. Um, so, and quite frankly, um, big part of it was my brother wouldn't let me go anywhere else. So uh, it was Georgetown or nothing basically, <laughs> but you know, it was probably one of the best decisions that were ever made in, in terms of uh, who I am today as a man and, and the experiences that I had at the university. Mark? Yeah, so for me, and you guys have heard this from me before, um, it's because of folks like Gene and Reggie who came before me. Dwayne, I was just a class behind you. Um, yeah, so growing up being a Hoya fan and watching Big Coach and all the all the guys that came before me, even though I didn't play, I was a huge fan. It was a big part of the reason why I chose Georgetown. Obviously, the academic opportunities at Georgetown were great. I'm from Connecticut and getting out of Connecticut and into a big city being in DC was really important to me, but um, yeah, it was really all of that, that, that brought me here. And like Dwayne, it was, I think the best decision I ever made. Bro. You know, the Georgetown experience really came from growing up in the area. I was born at Georgetown university hospital and a uh, year that coach got there in 1973. And growing up here, you know, all you all you ever see um, during that time in the 80s was, you know, Georgetown winning and and, you know, and all of the all the great players that, that were during that era. So when it came down to where did I want to go to school, it was never a question. The only question was, was, was I able to even be good enough? And um, when, when, when coach came and watched me play on the playground and offered me a scholarship, I had done the back end work of the school work that allowed me to be able to go to Georgetown. And I hold, you know, myself fully accountable for, you know, carrying the torch that I had been, that I had witnessed <laughs> growing up of all the great players, you know, from the area that stayed home, so. That was my reason for coming to Georgetown. Mm -hmm. 
You're on mute, Jane. I got the, the little guy here. Apologies. So so for me, um, I always get caught up in, in, in hearing the stories, um, even though once I hear them, I forget to, you know, to ask for the, the stories to happen again. Um, but I, I think it's very powerful um, when you hear the stories about how people arrived on the hilltop and, and how, what role the basketball program played in that. Um, so I, I think with this being the, the welcome to Coach Cooley um, additional episode, um, I, I guess I'd like to dive right in. Um, and, and um, you know, I, I guess I'll start with um, how did everybody feel upon hearing the news? And then to take it even further, um, if both Jerome and Mark can comment on what it was actually like being there and the temperature in the room and the, the energy in the room, good and bad. Um, and um, you know, since we just got Jerome's beautiful smile, we'll, we'll, we'll start with Mark. Yeah, so um, yeah, the energy Wednesday was fantastic. Uh, you know, from the second you walked into the Thompson Center, it was a celebration. Um, there was a lot of anticipation. There was a good crowd um, in Nolan Hall where the press conference was. Um, for folks who don't know it, that's like the main room on the lobby level of the Thompson Center. It's used for a bunch of you know, meetings regularly, but it was set up with chairs. Um, you know, press was obviously there. There were former players, obviously, Jerome Church, Jeff Green, and Tyler Crawford were there. Um, and then a bunch of donors and fans, the, the band, the cheerleaders. And it was a great festive atmosphere. People were excited. Um, there was a lot of anticipation for it. I think, you know, in terms of what the reaction was from you know, my, where I sit when coach Cooley was announced as the coach on Monday, there was a lot of excitement. Um, the fans, you know, Hoy fans were really excited to have him as our next coach. Um, and I could talk more about this as we go throughout the day, but I've heard from a ton of people who have decided to buy season tickets now, just this week, um, have decided to donate to the Hoy hoop club, have decided to get back involved in supporting the program. And, you know, that's obviously a great thing, but um, let me, let me pause there on the, Jerome give his reaction, but you know, the one thing, and I, I do want to talk more about this as we go through it, but the first thing that coach Cooley did was call up the former players who were in attendance. And I talked to coach Cooley about that later in the afternoon and told him how meaningful that was. And we could talk more about that later, but with that, let me pass it to you, Jerome. Yeah. My, my whole reaction uh, to the atmosphere, you know, the uh, I hadn't been to Coach JT3's uh, you know inauguration when he first got hired, but I was at March Madness when he first got hired, and now he had a great electricity and energy uh, from the student body. So when I went to Patrick's um, inauguration, it was good energy, but Ed Cooley's inauguration and the energy in the room, to Mark's point, was very you know electric. Um, you know, there was a certain level of, I guess, optimism that I hadn't seen um, at others. So I felt it from alumni press. I felt it from, you know, the student body. I felt it, you know, like you said, from, you know, former players because <laughs> former players like myself weren't expected to be brought to the front. <laughs> we just, you know, like uh, Dwayne has said in the past, like, you know, you don't always get treated you know, with certain level of uh, of respect, but at the, at the same time, you know, um, I was very shocked and 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 could really tell that it was genuine. So that's what I saw. Let me piggyback back off of what Jerome said because I, I talked to to Church Robert Churchwell and about that, and I said I don't know if somebody told him to do it or if he did it on his own, what I think was a great thing. And Church said, oh, no, 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 no. He did that on his own because me and Jerome were shocked. Uh, and I, like, I asked Church, I said, have you met him before? Like right before the press conference, he was like, bro, never. Like that was all him. That was all in cool. Um, so I, me personally, I, I think that was, that's fabulous. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, pivot to number 12 right now. So 
it was it was reported, uh, good or bad. It was it was it was reported online that we we had the players only uh, meeting with Coach Cooley, uh, which all of us were a part of. Um, everyone on the on the call, um, and it was reported um, what was said in the meeting, meaning excerpts, and whether it was in context or out of context. Um, I'd like Dwayne to kind of speak to uh, his thoughts about uh, the players only um, meeting. Um, and just to um, also intro, Jeff Bullis um, actually responded um, to some of the claims about what the meeting was about. And um, because it, it was framed online as contentious. Um, and, um, and, and Jeff, uh, uh, basically defined it as more about frustration. Um, so with that lead in, Dwayne, I'd kind of like for you to speak to the players only meeting. Yeah, I, I was on for uh, maybe about 10, 15 minutes. Um, and at the time, Reggie, Reggie was uh, speaking. And, you know, I don't think it's any secret, you know, um, how Reggie feels about things or felt about things uh, over the years. And, you know, I, I listened to Reggie and the last thing he said was, uh, I think someone, it may have been Coach Cooley or someone asked him, you know, why don't you go around or something in that context? And Reggie just said, they didn't want me around, you know, and if for better or worse, I think that's the way a lot of former players felt, you know, uh, not not so much when Patrick was there. I didn't feel that way, you know, in particular when Patrick was there, but the, 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 as they say, the groundwork had already been laid, you know, uh, as a former player, it's my, it's my university. I'm going to always support in, in, in any way that I can. And as I've told people in the past, you know, if I didn't love the university or didn't want to support the program, I wouldn't have sent two players there and, and sat in on a couple of meetings to make sure that Greg Monroe went to school there, you know, so my support for the university has always been there. Uh, my frustrations have always been there as well as a former player feeling like you're not wanted or welcome. It's a difficult thing. You know, for my part, you know, I, I just wanted to let coach know that we're here. I'm here, you know, and to help him in any way that I can. If that if that's as a local high school coach talking to uh, potential players or or, you know, steering some of my guys who I know are going to be, you know, high level players to be able to play at a school like Georgetown. But mo most importantly, just wanted him to know that you know, I'm happy he's there. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm excited for the, what the future can be. And as a former player, just wanted him to know that I, I'm at his service in whatever way I could be helpful. Um, as far as the con content, con uh, contention in the meet in the uh, call, I didn't hear a lot of it because I wasn't on for all of the meeting. Like I said, I was only on for about 15 minutes and I caught a little bit of it at the end when Reggie was talking, but you know, I, I, I don't, I don't have any contention about anything. You know, uh, Ed Cooley's record speaks for itself. You know, he's been able to win at a school um, that doesn't have the resources or the pedigree that Georgetown has. And, and I think that if he has that support from all those who can give it, I, I don't have any doubt that he's going to do well. I mean, he's proven he can win. Well, well uh, Joe, you said, uh, for good or bad, I, that it was absolutely bad, in my opinion, that one of us leaked uh, what happened in the meeting uh, to someone who uh, was not or had no business being on the call because uh, the folks that quoted it uh, quoted exactly what Reggie said. Um, uh, I, I don't think doing that type of thing uh, is very helpful at all. Uh, and I think it's unfortunate that it happened. And I hope whoever did that uh, will think about it uh, in a different way going forward. Uh, and let's welcome, uh, you know, people think he was running late, uh, but Reggie Williams 
He's never late. He's always on time. And, uh, we, we, we're the miracles here. We were waiting for him. We were doing our steps out. Uh, welcome to the program, Reg. Can you hear us, Reggie? So he's getting while while he's getting situated. I want I want to kind of um, um, I do want I I just want to single out Dwayne because even though you only caught ten to fifteen minutes of of the conversation, um, I think you caught the the gist of it, and I, I think the way you framed it at the end. Um, was extremely powerful, and I think it will be extremely beneficial to Coach Cooley. Um, what I also like to touch on is that I thought it was pretty awesome um, when you were talking, Dwayne. Um, he let you know he knew who you were. Yeah. Um, and that, that, to me, again, speaks volumes because you know he is you know part of the Big East. He has been part of the Big East, um, um, but you know it's it's not like he had to do homework. Right, so he's hitting the ground fully immersed. So I, I, I thought that was powerful. I thought that spoke volumes for me. Um, um, so, so yeah, I mean, Reggie, you got us now? Yes, I'm here, Jane. Okay, as Markham said- uh, Do we want to call him Reggie or do we want to call him Smokey? <laughs> <laughs> With the beard? Well, like I, I said, I, hey, I just, call, are here, baby. I, I, I just call him my vet. <laughs> <laughs> What's my up, roomie. D? My What's roomie. up, D? What's up, How you doing, boy? I'm good, man. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Yeah. So as Markham said, you know, what was it, Markham? Reggie's never late. He's always on time. Reggie's never late. They're always on time. The, the, the superstar yeah. the superstar comes last on stage. That's, that's um, all that is. I, um, I was just getting out of church, man. It was a little long winter today, but um, I try to, you know, do it as much as possible. So... Yeah, well, I always say um, at the end, like I, I appreciate everybody, uh, especially on the Sunday, because I know it's a, it's a day of rest or a day of recovery or whatever, getting ready for your week. Uh, so yeah, we more than appreciate it. Okay, so, Reg, we were just talking about uh, your, uh, you know, your comments your being comments leaked being out of the private down. meeting. Uh, just want to get your thoughts on, uh, you know, Coach Cooley being hired. You know, re really, let's, let's keep it. What, what were your thoughts about the call? Because some people thought it was contentious uh, amongst us. And I certainly didn't feel like it was contentious at all. Was it other players saying contentious? Who was no. who was saying? No, it was the, the way it was reported and people's reaction to it. Okay, um, was it the people online with us on the Zoom call? It was not. Well, they were talking about someone who was on the Zoom call who leaked what you said to uh, uh, a blogger. Oh, okay. I mean, my thoughts of it, um, I really don't have no thoughts um, as far as them uh, posting it. I, you know, I thought it was um, uh, a conversation where, you know, with players and managers, um, but, um, you know, I talk in facts, you know, I don't talk in nothing more than that, what I, what I see and what I hear. So, um, but they didn't put the other stuff that I said um, on there that, you know, I'm tired of seeing Kansas and um, Kentucky win, you know, I want the program to succeed. They didn't put that kind of stuff up there or welcoming Ed that I wanted him uh, to be the uh, coach at Georgetown. They didn't put that up there. So, you know, you can't, con control people narratives in life and so you just move on and I'm a I'm a still gonna be Reggie and I'm gonna walk in my truth about um, what I see and hear. And the, and the truth of the matter is Reggie uh, to be honest with you if I had gone on there earlier they might have heard a little bit more. Yeah and I, and I don't say a whole lot that I should say you know what right, I mean. Right. No I'm, 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 I'm with you I'm with you and, and to Markham's point it really bothers me that someone uh someone framed that the way that they did without without framing the whole narrative about Beautiful. what we said, you know? And I, yeah. and I, th this is the first thing I'm hearing about that, to be honest with you. Uh, and, and if I had, if I wasn't on my way to dinner, uh, you know, I, I, I actually reached out to Lee and asked to speak with him, to speak with coach, because I wanted him to understand 
some of the history that a lot of us carry and, and what that feels like. And to Gene's point, it was in, in Markham's, it was pretty interesting that he did that on his own. Whether, whether yeah. it was something he was feeling or, or something someone told him at some point, but I felt that it would have been very important for him to sit down with two or three former guys who feel the way we do about what the program has become to us. Mm -hmm. Because whether guys want to admit it or not to say it or they're worried about repercussions or whatever, a lot of guys don't say how they really feel and how they really were really treated in a yeah. lot of ways. You know what I mean? And for me, like you said, Reggie, I, I'm I'm gonna live in my truth and what I know for fact, not what somebody said I'm hearing. And like I said, Markham's been around me long enough to know he's heard it time and time again. Matter of fact, Markham was very instrumental in me going to a Hoya Black alumni event, something I had never been to, multiple events at the university, including reunions. That, that I hadn't been in. And, and he and Jaron for years have been trying to get me to get back involved and stuff. So he was very instrumental in me going to an event and Jerome was there as well. So, you know, it just really bothers me that someone would go and, and, and write about that and, and just completely misunderstand and misrepresent the context of what was said. Oh yeah, I mean, um, that's all true. Uh, the, and, um, you know, just like I said, um, you know, they didn't, um, talk about the full context of um the meaning of what um i said exactly and, and you know and you know what and i meant every word of it too i meant every word of it and so um but we never had um uh, you know a uh, conversation like that where you know a coach came in and you know the first thing he said is uh um bring up the the former players or want to talk to the former players to see how they feel and we all a lot of guys feel the way we feel but they scared to talk, you know, exactly. you know, I don't know what they scared of talking for I me. Mean, um, you know, you might mess up your tickets or whatever. I can buy my own tickets. If, you know, if that, if that's the case, I can watch the team on TV, you know, it's all, it's, it's different, you know, ways to um, support your university. Um, so, um, you know, um, it's, you know, they kind of look at it as being contentious or negative, but they haven't lived, they haven't lived our walk, you know, um, where you feel alienated or not welcome at the university that you put so much time and work in. You know what I mean? So I do feel a certain kind of way, but it don't control me. You know what I mean? I don't walk around angry and mad, but um, it's something that, um, you know, I feel proud about or what we did. Uh, Georgetown only had one championship and I was on there, you know? Wait a minute. So, so Reggie, uh, Reggie, are you, I heard what you said about putting the work in. Are you, are you trying to imply that the, uh, the player of the game for the national championship game worked hard. Are you trying to imply that the, the guy who's won the most games in the history of Georgetown worked hard? Is, is that what you're trying to say, my man? Well, well, I, I'm going to interject right now. And the only thing I want to say, as, as I mentioned to Dwayne, when Coach Cooley said Reggie was his hero, I was, I was, I was done. Like that, that to me showed um like this guy is is not a stranger to our program as he should as he should not be right because you know he's been competing competing against us for a while but but i want to bring in and, and mark to speak to what both hold, hold, hold on before you do that jam i want, want to say one thing yep. uh since we've taken since people like to take things out of context and but another thing that reggie williams said uh was I don't know if you're the best coach, but you're the best coach for Georgetown. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well said. We don't well want said. to quote everything. Well, yeah. but Jordan, we don't have to worry about any leaks today because we're we're we're, we're the source. We're the source, <laughs> right? So we're good. Uh, Mark, I'd like for you to respond to both Dwayne and Reggie and kind of bring it into context because. Um, um, without getting in, into details, but you spent quality time with Coach Cooley on that incredible day uh, on Wednesday, where he was running from on campus to with the Chili's, with the pep band, with all the coaches on campus, to the Zoom he had with us, to meeting with fans. 
So in that in that context, uh, speak, but you know, speaking to Dwayne and, and Reggie um, as they spoke so eloquently on that call. Yeah, thanks, Gene. So you know, the one thing I, I'm glad you said it because I wanted to make sure everybody knew what uh, Coach Cooley said to Reggie when Reggie, when you started to introduce yourself. And he cut you off and said, Reggie, I know who you are. You're my hero. Um, that's that's who this guy is. And, you know, I, I feel very fortunate. And look, I, I'm friends with a lot of you guys. I've, I've talked to a lot of you about issues in the past. But I, I can tell you one thing as we move into this new era. Coach Cooley is really focused on including everybody. Um, we talked about it at the, at the start. But the fact that the very first thing he did as coach was call the former players, Jerome Churchwell, uh, Jeff Green and Tyler Crawford, who were in the room up to the, up to the podium spoke volumes. And I talked to him about that after and said, you know, that was really meaningful. And he said, well, how's that meaningful? That's a very simple gesture. And I said, it's going it, to, that speaks volumes about how the program that you're going to build here. And I do know that the zoom call that he had with all you guys, that was his idea. And he was in, very much focused on making sure that happened on his first day as coach. He didn't want to wait a day. He had a busy day. He flew in that morning. It was a long day. Uh, he and his family were clearly exhausted. They'd been through a lot, you know, through the last four days, whatever it was, as they made their decision to, to come here to Georgetown. But the one thing that Coach Cooley's focused on, first and foremost, yes, being inclusive, involving all you guys. I really liked when he said, I want, to, I want you to tell me what you're seeing. He wants to hear from you all. And I, he's genuine in saying that. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with all you guys and the program and helping to build bridges. And, you know, there will be, I think, a lot more involvement and a lot more recognition um, going forward. He, he and I had a couple conversations about that throughout the day. And I don't want to blow all his surprises for things that he has in mind. But trust me when I say he's really focused on making sure that you guys are involved and feel part of this because he knows that there is no Georgetown basketball today without all of you. We are all resting on your shoulders and he's keenly aware of that. Um, in terms of like other involvement, he, he was very focused on meeting with students. He met with the cheerleaders. He came up after the um, press conference, there was an event up in the gym. Jerome was there. He walked in, the cheerleaders were standing there. He went over in a private conversation with the cheerleaders and the band talking to them about he needs them to help create the atmosphere in Capital One Arena, which he refers to as the spot. He wants it to be an event. He doesn't want it to just be a game. He wants it to be a focus for everybody to get there. Um, he met another thing that he wanted to do on his very first day was meet with all the other Georgetown coaches. And I was, I think Jerome, you were there too, able to hear what he said to those coaches. And what it was, was we're a part, we're a partnership. I'm here to help you. I want to learn from you. You guys have been at Georgetown. I want to learn from you about what works, but also I'm here to help you. He's somebody who's going to relate to the entire community and get us all excited to be Georgetown fans and get to the games. And obviously that's a critical part of what we do with the Hoya Hoop Club, but he's going to really be active in our community. And it's really refreshing and fun. He's, he's a wonderful guy. He's fun to talk to. He's got a lot of energy. And I just, I'm really optimistic for where we're going. And uh, I'd like to touch on that as well. Uh, if I may, Gene, um, the contentious uh, narrative uh, from my perspective is just false. In order to heal, people have to be allowed to tell their truth. And part of that truth is gonna hurt just because when you hear the truth, you're like, man, really? You know, people think, you know, I was treated like, you know, at the red carpet at Georgetown because I was Coach Thompson's last first round pick. But that's further from the truth. Um, I'm not saying that I was treated wrong in any way. I'm not here to do that or, or explain that. But what I am here to say is a lot of what I hear other alumni say, I have had happen to me myself. Um, but having said that, a lot of good things that I've, I've seen happen to me and other alumni, I've seen as well. And I think that where I feel Coach Cooley comes in, I've seen where that kind of positivity 
that kind of focus and that kind of uh, leadership can lead to more alumni who have helped build the reputation of Georgetown um, can see some good things um, for them as well. And I think that that's part of the healing process. I think that's part of the process that everybody is, is wanting to get to, but it takes a certain person to deliver that. He, you know, from a standpoint of, of, of energy wise, it takes a lot for somebody to make a decision and within 48 hours, turn around and, you know, basically all engines go. And so when we came in on all engines go within that 48 hour decision being made, now we get to see how hard is this guy going to work? You know, what, you know, when you're tired, sometimes you can tend to forget things because you're caught up in the moment of, man, I, I got this job at Georgetown. Okay. I got to do this press conference and I got to meet a few people and I can, you know, go on with my day and kind of get ramped up. No, no, no. What we saw was something different. He sat his piece of paper down and said, I don't know how much I'm going to read off of this, but I know I have to read off of this because there's people I can't forget. And then he starts with the alumni, like, wait a minute. Okay. That, <laughs> that right there sends a message of, I cannot do my job without recognizing and acknowledging and making sure that they're at the forefront as being players. And so when we say that we were allowed to like Reggie's point, say his truth, Dwayne Bryant, say his truth and have the new leader listen to that truth and then respond. And his response to Reggie and Dwayne, because I was on the call was, oh no, I want you at practices. Oh no, I want you in the building. Oh no, you will be down front. You will not be in the 300s. Like those kinds of things send a message like they, okay, Everybody heard it. <laughs> so now um, it can't be a contentious narrative placed on that because we were able to hear it and we were able to, you know, like I said, people were able to speak their truth and get a response. Now from that response, now we're just in waiting. We're in waiting now, but we're in a positive waiting because everybody can feel this certain level of energy that's coming. We can feel that I know I know Reggie played in the stadium that had 20,000 in it, 17, 18,000. I know I know Gene did. I know Dwayne did. I know I did. So I'm like that. That's all I remember. I don't I don't remember, you know, <laughs> I think our, the least amount of the people were at our stadium. Was, yeah, it was about 12,000. I think that was like, man, ain't a lot of people here tonight. I don't see the upper decks packed. Like, but the lower bowl and everything else. So, so I, I, I just, when I hear that being said, that's what I want to see. So I just want to make sure I, I said that as well. Thank you. Uh, no, thank you. Mark, and before you uh, jump in next, I just want to uh, uh, push this to Dwayne, Reggie, and Jerome, because I thought about, thought, and I also thought about Joey, and, and Mark will touch on, on Joey uh, in a second. But I thought about, you three, Dwayne, you having sent players to Georgetown, Reggie, your son having played at Georgetown, Jerome with the investments that you have um, at Georgetown in terms of your family. Um, and then also um, you got up and coming and just like Joey has up and coming. Coach Cooley said not once, he said it at the presser, but he also said it on the players only call. Uh, do any of you have any kids that can play? Um, and, you know, I, I want to know, um, the feeling that that invoked or the feeling that, that, did that mean anything to you, um, in terms of like, okay, yeah, I would love to, for my kid, if, it, if the kid wants to go there, to go there, right? I mean, that's organic, that's natural, but hearing that, um, did that, what did that mean to you? Like, what did that represent? And I'll show you, Dwayne, because you've already sent kids there. Um, I, 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 for me, it means what um, what I said before, right? Uh, for your paranoia to me was about family. It was about the guys who were in that gym day after day uh, battling each other, you know, 
becoming brothers, becoming people who believed and trusted in each other. So, you know, as I said before, the reason I sent those guys to Georgetown is because of my love of the university and wanting to see it do well, especially the basketball program, right? That's going to be a part of my life forever. You know, quick story. Uh, and Jerome, no, I think Jerome knows this kid. Uh, I had a kid who played for me last year named Jamie Kaiser, uh, who was one of the top players in the country, ended up going to Mount Verde. And uh, I reached out. So I got a kid, I'm telling you, you got to get on him now. And guess where he wanted to go originally? Georgetown. Guess where he's going? Maryland. Enough said, <laughs> you know? So, and it, it just it just baffled me in, in so many ways. Like, dude, I, I, look, look, I've proven that I can send you players who can play. If he can't play at Georgetown, I ain't telling you about him. Kid became one of the best players in the country. He's going to Maryland. You know, Maryland. And wanted to go to Georgetown. Couldn't get anybody to talk to the family, talk to the kid. You know, um, so it means a lot to me. It, it means a lot to me that coach is reaching out in that manner, especially being a high school coach. and and knowing the freshmen that I have, two kids in particular, and a freshman, 6'8", six, 6'9", six, kid that they call him Baby Jokic, that's coming next year. So, yeah, it means a lot to know that, you know, if I call and mention these kids or say these kids are interest, interested, that there's actually going to be some follow-up and somebody's going to actually, you know, Rush. take take that take that and, and, and do something with it, run with it, and, and actually – do some research and, and, and reach out about it. Ron? Yeah, I think that, you know, just echoing what, uh, what Dwayne was saying right there, I totally, totally agree because there have been times when I had some kids as well um, coaching at Finley Prep and knowing the families, knowing these things, uh, you know, the recruit recruitment process is a heavily competitive area. And the staff of the head coach is so crucial, but you have to, you have to allow and understand that certain alumni are connected um, to kids and, and connected to the community in a way that they, they can really help the scenario and push the narrative. And the narrative is, if you're trying to get back to championship levels, there are people who have played who were Big East champions, such as myself, Reggie, um, Gene, Wayne. Like, we know what it takes to carry that trophy. And if we're saying, here's a kid, you know, we're not, <laughs> you know, we don't want any charity. <laughs> we, we want our school to perform and, and be like it was. So, um, but it does take relationships and those relationships have to be respected. I think that from a standpoint of what's best for the university, no, we didn't get hired as a head coach. So that's not our job. But what our job is, is to try to help as all modders, it, you know, keep us at a level of respectability. And that has to be, you know, reciprocated from the coaching staff. And, and I feel like that's where I see uh, a different, a different uh, breath of air in terms of what they might see in alumni as to helping the process. Patrick, um, he called me on numerous occasions about kids, he followed up on kids that I talked about. So this is in no way a shot at anybody on the staff or, or future, but I'm just letting you know that it has to be across the board because every kid may not fit, but there has to be a follow-up. There has to be some sort of contingency uh, uh, that they will look at, you know, people that are being brought to the table by a certain amount of time. Russ? Yeah, um, I agree with um, Dwayne and, and J-Dog. Um, 
you know, you, um, you know, I coached uh, 10 years in high school, um, you know, before Patrick got there, I had some D1 players on my team also. And that um, I was asked um, where they D1 players. I said, hell yeah, you don't see what I see. Um, this guy went to play for Baylor, you know, Baylor. He started, you know, at Baylor and Baylor a few years ago, won a national championship. So he was on that, um, that he wasn't on a national championship team, but he was, you know, leading up to them winning that national championship. So, um, but you know, it was a fresh, it was a breath of fresh air. When a coach comes on, yes, been hard, no more than 24 hours, um, saying, Hey, I need help too. You know what I mean? Anybody have any good players that, you know, where are they? And I thought that was um, refreshing, man, to hear because, you know, we haven't heard that in 20 years, you know, or more, you know. So I think it's um, to get back to where we um, should be. That's how, that's in my mind, um, you know, uh, competing for championships. If the league, Big East, national, you know, that's that's the day I'm still, you know, um, pushing for and 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 want to see so badly um, us being mentioned with all the teams that we use, North Carolina, Kentucky, Missouri, all those teams, you know what I mean? So, um, but he seems to be open. Um, we just have to wait and see uh, what um, Coach Cooley is, you know, is going to bring to the table. The man's, you know, been out there 29 years. Um, he has a good reputation wherever he uh, went. He won. And so hopefully that he can bring that, you know, you know, transition that into the G, G, G town, man. You know, that's the, you know, I, I didn't even watch, um, you know, I, you know, uh, NCAA like I used to, you know, because my team is not in there. I don't want to see that damn team play, you know, I want to, you know, see Georgetown play, you know, so, um, you know, we all want to see, you know, um, the basketball team, to get back to that national level. And, um, you know, um, if you got to speak the truth, just like Jay said, sometimes the truth hurt. And, you know, we don't go around promoting, going on tours, uh, you know, uh, you know, talking bad about Georgetown, but when it comes to, you know, you know, to situation like this, you know, I'm not afraid to say, Hey, we've been bad. We've been a mess. You know, we've been a mess. And so I'm ready to get back. I'm ready to get back. So what 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 I should have done at the earlier part of the show is to put in put a frame of reference around what you individuals mean in terms of the program. So we have um during your playing days, we have one national championship, we have two final fours. We have five elite eights. We have six uh, Sweet 16, four Big East tournament champions, five Big East regular season champions. From 84 to 96, we only missed a tournament one year. So that's what we're speaking about for anyone that wants the narrative and what we're trying to express here. Um, yeah, I just wanted to put a bow around that for, for everyone. Markham? Yeah, one thing I want to say, and I, I don't think you could do the show without this, is that our athletic director, Lee Reed, deserves a huge shout out uh, uh, for, for making this happen. Uh, you know, the, if, if you look at Lee's track record, when he's been allowed to be Lee Reed, he's been pretty successful. So that alone gives me uh encouragement i mean you know the soccer team on the national no soccer won a national championship in 2019 uh so I, I think the guy knows a little bit about what he's doing uh and jane you mentioned uh joey joey brown for those who don't who, those of you who might not know who i'm talking about uh but joey uh couldn't make it because he is uh coaching uh, his team in the national championship AAU game today. Uh, and just a, another thing in case you don't know, Joey has a son uh, named Christian and at 10, 11 years old looking at videos, uh, you, you can see that 
he would be great in a Hoya uniform one day. Um, as to Coach Cooley's question about the owner you have in kids, uh, be on the lookout for Christian Brown. Um, yeah, that little sucker can play. Be on the lookout. Um, <laughs> and I, I don't think that it can be understated uh, the, the joy and excitement that uh, people are feeling. Uh, Joe, Joey texted me uh, after the new uh, Zoom that we had with Coach Kool. Uh One sentence, this hire just feels right. And uh, for, for a guy like Joey Brown, who for, for me, m m very much, very similar to Reggie, he wasn't a guy uh, to, to talk a lot. He was somebody who just did it, did the work, uh, and um, brought you along with him. Uh, to have a guy like Joey uh, say that, I, I think means a lot. You know, Mark, um, let, let me ask you this. Uh, you're talking, I don't think he said it. Uh, did we lose Mark? Uh, I, I don't think he said it, uh, but Mark is the president on the Hoya Hoop Club. So what effect, Mark, do you think uh, this week uh, had and will have moving forward uh, in that role for you? Yeah, it's been, I started hinting at this earlier, Markham. Uh, it's been incredibly positive. Uh, I had people reach out to me from literally the moment um, Coach Cooley was announced by George on Monday as our new head coach. Um, people reaching out, how do I, how do I contribute to the men's basketball program? How do I buy more tickets? How do I get season tickets? I know that the athletic department did a really good job and you mentioned Lee and I obviously want to also thank Lee. Lee's a good friend and I think he's just a phenomenal AD um, and he's handled this whole situation phenomenally, but he also, the, the entire department is focused on moving ahead and taking advantage of coach Cooley and all he has to offer. So, you know, right away there was offers for season tickets for other ticket plans that people can purchase and capitalizing on the excitement around it. And there's so many people who reached out to me and I know who reached out to the athletic department. How can I be more involved? How can I contribute? And you know, so, so far after what it's been six days, it's just been incredibly positive. There's a lot of energy in the fan base um, for the Hoy Hoop Club you know, a lot of what we do is outreach, right? We want to focus on outreach. Obviously, men's basketball alumni is one, one, of, one of our pillars of outreach. Young alumni we're focused on. We've lost a lot of young alumni. We want to bring young alumni back into the fold and make sure that they're fans, they're going to the games. The D.C. community, you know, back when you guys all played, uh, we had a ton of people from the D.C. community that were supporting our program going to the games. We want to get the D.C. community back involved and supporting Georgetown. Um, yeah, you know, we focus on fundraising, obviously, fundraising for the program. Uh, there's so many facets of what needs to be done to help the program, the students. Coach Cooley's focused on touching all of these groups that can and do support Georgetown basketball and making sure that he's bringing them in. And for the Hoop Club, we're here to support that in any way we can. We want to create excitement around the program. We want to have events obviously for our fans, which includes you guys now. Before and after games, whether we're at home, on the road, we wanna bring people together to celebrate everything that is Georgetown and now to celebrate what I think will be a very successful team. And I know Coach Cooley, he said in his press conference that we're gonna win and we're gonna win a lot. And I know he fully, fully believes that, but he also recognizes and he said it, he needs the help of all these groups to get there. He needs the help of you guys, he's welcoming it. He needs the help of, he said, the media. Everybody needs to be involved to help lift us up. It, it's going to take a lot, but it's not going to be that hard because we have such a strong community. And just to touch on that, you're so true. I mean, the, the Georgetown community just raised $4.8 million for the baseball team. Yep. You know, for the baseball team. I mean, that's, that's incredible. But, you know, we need that type of support to come around the basketball team that has done so much uh, as as being a, a, a bridge maker for our university globally. 
And that starts with all the alumni that played and had and wore the uniform of Georgetown. So when we're dysfunctional and we're not together as a unit, that hurts the overall um, narrative of the group. And that's what I'm, you know, been focused on since I got back is to really just, you know, focus on positive things, trying to, you know, create the right narrative for Georgetown in that way. And I think that that's going to come from the program itself, Coach Cooley, who's reached out and said those exact words that Mark just said. And then having guys like Reggie and Dwayne and Gene and others um, that have always been supportive and people who may not have had both feet in to come back. Because when I see the NCAA tournament, I see a lot of former players at those games huddled around their group of new players and new alumni that are saying, hey, we're trying to do the same thing we saw happen um, back in the day. Like when I was at Georgetown, it was about, I want to get to that point where I saw Patrick Ewing and Reggie and, and, and Mike and everybody. I want to get to that. And we came up a little bit short in Elite Eight, but that was the goal. That was like, nah, we trying to fight. We can win this thing. And you got to have that. And I felt like alumni were supportive of us the whole time. And Jerome, yeah, you know, Jerome. To, to, to your point, Jerome, uh, it, it, it's, Georgetown is one of those places where a lot of folks, in particular younger folks who come now, they've been coming to those games with their, their dad, their granddad, you know, folks for, for years, you know, for years. And I can't tell you how many times I've run into people who, who talk about the, the quote unquote old days, right? Um, and I think you miss something when you have, and, and you know, I've, I've been to very few games over the last 20 years. Uh, one of my biggest regrets is that when Markel Starks and Roy Hibbert was playing at Georgetown, I think I got to see each one of them play maybe two times in, in my, in my in, and I was still coaching high school ball. Um, but what happens is, is when you have former players go to those games, it, it's amazing to see how many people come up and talk to you and talk about the good old days and talk about, you know, what, what they would like to see and this, that, and the other. And that feeds into what Jerome is talking about, which is that, su that support becomes organic at that point, right? When, when you've been around Georgetown basketball as a fan, you know, like Mark was talking about, and then you got people who were, who were, you know, fans back in the 70s and 80s whose kids and grandkids are not going to those games. And they're not seeing former players. They lose that connection because they're not as connected to the younger guys. So they're connected. Their connection is through guys like Reggie Williams, you know, guys like myself, guys like Gene, guys like Jerome. That's their connection because when you walk into the arena, you can literally see people going, that's, that's Reggie Williams, you know, a, a dad telling his son or a granddad, you know, a, a grandfather telling his grandson, that, that's Reggie Williams. That's, he was on the championship team or that's, you know, Dwayne Bryan, he played for that means something. So that so you bridge that connection from what was to what is. And, and it brings in a different kind of excitement. So, you know, to Jerome's point, I think, you know, what Coach Cooley is saying, if it happens, we, we will see that change a lot sooner than later. You will see it a lot sooner than later. I've been around this and game at the high school level long enough. You will see that change happen a lot sooner than later. Because and to your you point, to your point, Dwayne, like you got to understand that like college basketball, you know, it's it's team. Yeah, they had Patrick. Yeah, they had Reggie Date, but it was team, man. You needed everybody. You need Gene Smith, right? You needed other. You need you need guys that are in the trenches, and and that's what makes you know college sports different than pro sports, right? You once you're in it, those are your brothers for life. And secondly. Um, to speak on my team, like we wouldn't have won without Jihadi Whites and, you know, Othello Harrington's and um, Bubakar Owls and Joseph Tuomo's. Like there's a, there's a whole host of guys 
that were just on the team that made us stronger. We made were us called Reggie in the we Miracles, were. bro. We were called yeah, Reggie in the Reggie. Miracles for a, re- for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> we were called Reggie in the Miracles for a reason. And look, hey, look, my so, vet hey. was my roommate my freshman year on the road. And, and we made sure I knew how to get him the ball. Hey, but listen, that's the whole point. I knew how to get AI the ball. Right. Right. But you, but Wayne, you had to get him the ball, period. And somebody had to set a screen for him. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it takes a village to, 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 to be able to make guys great and to make great players greater. It takes that. It takes commitment. It takes a lot of things. Because I know from my team, Everybody on my team thought they were going to the NBA. Every single player, top to bottom. But it, it, it's you still have to conform into a role that you that might not fit your narrative. And and we had players that did that. We had players that did that for the for the overall betterment of the team and and trying to make that G a success. So I, that's what I respect about a coach Cooley is that he's saying. Not just this guy, not just that, everybody. The one thing I want to point out, Jerome, and and for people to understand if they're watching this and listening to this, we as a group of alumni players have always been together. We've always been together. I've always been able to call Reggie Williams to see how he's doing. I've always been able to talk to Gene Smith or Bebe Durham. You know, I've always had those relationships with those guys. It was never the player's issue. We were always together. I can't think of one guy who's ever played at Georgetown that I don't see, know, or don't like. Right? We've always been together. The common denominator for 90% of us was we didn't feel like we were wanted around. But as a group, and I want to give a shout out to Robert Churchwell, too, uh, just because, you know, Church has done a tremendous job of setting up you know, the Zooms and meetings and keeping people connected and in and, and that regard. And I haven't been on in a while, but the very first few that I was on, you had 50, 60 former players on there. You know, guys who went all the way back to when Coach Thompson first started coaching. You know what I mean? And and as a group of alumni players, we've always been together. So I don't want anybody watching this and listening to this to think that we were a dysfunctional basketball program or, 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 or players. We've yeah. always done it because anytime you see a former player, you hug them. How you doing, man? Where you been? How's life? We've always been that way. Always. So I just want to make sure people who are hearing this or seeing this understand that we've always had each other's back. Always. Always have been 100 percent correct. 100 percent correct. You guys touched on a lot, a lot of things. Um, I just want to kind of hi- highlight a couple of things. M- made me think about um, the press conference, but before I do that. Uh, Dwayne, <laughs> you just made me laugh inside because you were talking about uh, Reggie and the Miracles. And I talked to Bobby Winston, uh, talked to him this week, but uh, probably a month or so ago, we were talking about, and I, I, I forget the game, but uh, last second, last second uh, play that was called for, and Bobby was inbounding the ball, and Smitty, Charles Smith, was wide open around the free throw line and uh Bobby looked him off and passed to Reggie in the corner. Reggie made a, a game winning shot and he said, Stan, Smitty was mad at me. I said, man, I'm trying to play. We got to get the ball to Reggie. I, I don't know if you remember that game or not. Uh you, you remember that game, Wayne? Yeah. <laughs> he hit it from the corner. Yeah, yeah. It was a three pointer from the right corner. Yeah, yeah. Um but, I, forget who, uh, I forget who we were playing, but I definitely remember that game. Yeah. Um, so a couple, couple of things that came up and then we're back and forth for uh, history and toughness. And, 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 and Mark talked about uh, getting the D.C. community back in the uh, One of the first things Cooley said at the press conference was, uh, we, we need to lock up the DMV. Uh, and that, I think, will be huge huge to our success um, because, you know, the DMV is right up there with Memphis in terms of producing basketball talent. Um, uh, and the, uh, the other thing that he uh, said that I thought was very important, uh, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, uh, but he said, 
I don't have anything to do with what happened yesterday. Uh, you know, I'm dealing with today and tomorrow. And that that forward forward looking focus uh, will will help us a good deal. Jim, uh, I I need I need to bring Russ in. I need to bring Reggie in um, because you know he's he's the mayor of Baltimore. Um, so if we're talking about community outreach, if we're talking about locking up the DMV. Um, and uh, DB as well, Dwayne as well. What does that look like? Um, not that you know we need to, an extensive roadmap, but what does that what does that what does that say to you, or what does that what does that mean? What does that look like? Um, as far as the recruiting field, Jane, locking up the DMV. Um, well, I have been out of the loop for years because nobody asked me for any help or anything. So um, I would have to you know um, research some of my um, people down there looking for um looking for for players now you know what i mean so um that's what i have to do as far as you know my support of the program and bringing the program back but um i want to say something what Dwayne said about the reggie and miracle piece it wouldn't have been the reggie without the miracles and i used to talk i had a young team i was the only senior on the team so Dwayne was the starting point guard freshman so he needed to be talked to every day you know what I mean? Um, so those guys listen to me. And so I try to get the best out of those guys because I knew if I could get the best out of those guys that we would win, you know, so I didn't look down on them or treated them any kind of, any kind of way, but always been positive because, you know, that's how, that's, that's, that's been me. You know what I mean? So I always um, fed into those guys because I said, if I can't get them to produce, we're not going to have, um, success because my first two years, first three years, you know, we had some squads, you know what I mean? So now it's my senior year, everybody gone, Patrick, James, Freddie, all of David Wingate, Michael Jackson. So they leave me there with some young pucker bucks. So in <laughs> order for us to be successful, I had to like brainwash those guys. They were the best thing since apple pie. You know what I mean? Everything was great. You know what I mean? So to get those guys. You made um, me believe it for sure. <laughs> they had those guys and man y'all you know it was a never a negative uh thing i said to those guys it always was positive even before my last game you know i had a, a team only meeting um with the guys and we was in elite eight get ready to play providence so i was telling those guys i said hey man we've been here it's a great opportunity um i said i need everybody in this room you get in um you got to get in there to perform as your best and um we went out there um uh, we lost the game, but we fought, you know, because we Georgetown, you know what I mean? And we had a chance to win. But um, I knew I needed those guys as much as they needed me. So um, I just want um, us to get back to what we were, you know. And I think, you know, from that press conference, I think it was a feel for everybody to say, damn, we um, we might be, um, might be close. You know what I mean? We want to get this man a fair sh chance. Um, you know, to do what he do. And um, I guess a lot of people are on board with this thing, man, because um, we want the program to win so bad, man. We just can taste it. We can taste uh, it. I, I'm going to interject here because when Reggie was a freshman, I was a senior. And, you know, to hear that Reggie as a senior was giving a team only meeting, that's what Georgetown's all about because Reggie wasn't, wasn't it wasn't about no team when he was a freshman. Just because he was that nice. Like he didn't really need any additional motivation. Um, which the national championship game was a culmination of how nice Reggie was. Um, the fact that he was MVP of that game. But I, I think it highlights everything you guys have talked about is what we represent as a program. And Dwayne touched on it, the players have always been in sync. If I, see, if I see anybody who's worn the blue and gray, if he's a walk-on and I don't know him and I'm introduced to him, he getting dapped up, he getting a hug, he getting whatever. Um, just because you know, what we all went through at that program, we have a connection, good or bad. Like, you got called to MF indirectly or directly while you were there. 
Um, so again, listening to, to Reggie talk about doing him calling a team only meeting, just, you know, I, I had to smile because Reggie didn't need a team only meeting when he was there. Cause he was just that nice. Um, but, but, but again, uh, I just, it made me recall when I was a, a freshman and I had Bebe who had already left pulling me under, under his wing at urban coalition when we had the herbal. Um, the summer league in DC, pulling me under under his wing and just talking to me about the game and what Georgetown represented, and that just speaks to uh, what we're talking about. No matter how far removed we may uh, think we are, I think Reggie said it. We're that close um, because again, these are shared experiences that are unique to the Hilltop. Um, so yeah, I just I just wanted to touch on that, um, guys. We're well over an hour. Um, I love you and thank you for, uh, again, coming through so we can welcome our new coach. Um, I, I, I'm sure Mark's going to make sure he gets a copy of this, um, at the very least. Uh, if he doesn't, I will. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Markham if he wants to do some. I had, I had something I wanted to ask, but uh, I'm taking up too much of you guys' time, and I may hit you. you know, I'm going to hit you. I just, go ahead, go ahead. I, I just and, and just for the record, just for the record, Reggie didn't like me when, we, when he was at Georgetown. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love you now, so that you know, so it was work in progress. That's but, all, um, the, Reggie. That's all that matters. You love me now. <laughs> when I was a freshman, you know, I had leaders like James Smith, Freddie Brown, so I didn't have to be a leader at that point. You know, I'm just coming in the door, but they had taught me how to be that leader. And when my turn came, that's how Georgetown was. You know what I mean? It was like a stepping stone, and we, as players, knew that. You know, we didn't need no coaches to tell us what was going on, but we respected each other. So when it was uh, my turn, when Gene was there, you know, he had guys in front of him, so he had to respect that. But when he became a senior, he became the leader. Even though, you know, he didn't start a lot of games or score a lot of points, that wasn't, that wasn't his focus, that wasn't his job. His job was to deep people asses up. That was his job. And he knew what his job and he did it very well. But when my time came, you know, um, you know, that's what I want to display. And that's what the um, the family of Georgetown is supposed to be about. And um, one other thing, when we um, when we came in there, we had other players. Remember the summertime, Gene, we had the, the battle people coming in, the, the, the bullets at the time, Jeff Rulin, um, Rick Mahorn, other players always came back during the summertime to compete against the, you know, the, the players on the team. We don't have that anymore. You know what I mean? So that's how you build relationships, camaraderie, support. And I hope um, that we uh, uh, lead in that direction again. So, man, you know, y'all have a great day, man. It's hey, been Gene, fun. I want to touch on two things before we go. Um, you had asked a question about what did it look like to lock down the DMV, right? For Reggie and for me. Uh, but one, one quick thing of what Reggie was saying. So Reggie was my roommate on the road as a freshman. Uh, and I felt like I had a connection with Reggie and practices my freshman year. I just knew where he was, right? And we would be in the hotel when he was in the hotel room. <laughs> we would be in the hotel and, and we would talk about where he was, where he liked to be, when he liked to receive, where he liked to receive the ball, right? But the biggest thing Reggie taught me was how to work and practice. He was our best player, but he was our hardest working player. I remember a play when Johnny Jones stole the ball from him in practice and Reggie ran his ass down and pinned that shit up on the glass. And then looked at him like, don't you ever take the ball from me again? That, and I think about that as a freshman. I'm with Reggie Williams, All-American. Who could, you know, if he wanted to, take a day or two off in practice. He was the hardest worker. So when I became that leader, right, that's what I was drawing on. You know, and Markham was there during that time. That's what I was drawing on. And I had to block out all the other stuff that was going on from coach because there was something bigger than that going on. You know what I mean? Something bigger than the other distractions that were going on. 
So I, I just wanted to kind of pick it back off of that, Reggie. So what does it look like to lock down the DMV, right? Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think the last big time player we have from the DMV to go to Georgetown, Jerome, help me out here, might have been Markel Starks, who played for me at Georgetown Prep and graduated from Georgetown, I want to say in 2010 or 12, something like that. The other guy too from uh, the math, uh, um they were they were they were before him. That's what I'm saying. The last one might have been yeah. Mark Starks, who was a highly rated player. Yeah. So yes. to me, what it looks down the lockdown the DMV, right? And I think it was ESPN or somebody came out and said that the DMV has the most talent of any place in the country when it comes to basketball. So what it looks like to me is is if we have 30 players that are in the top 100, right, in this area, we should be getting five to six of those to come to Georgetown. I can't think of the last time we had, might have been Austin Freeman and Chris Wright, the last time we had a McDonald's All-American. Yeah. So that just tells you how long it's been since we've, since we've been to that level. So when you're talking about locking down the DMV, right, you get a Dave Wingate, you get a Reggie Williams. You get a Mark Tillman, you get a Dwayne Bryant, you get a Patrick Ewan, right? You get a Billy Martin, you get a Michael Jackson. You know what I mean? You get some of the top players in the country, not to mention the ones that are right in your backyard. And it's been a long time since we've done that. So to me, that's what it looks like the lockdown of DMV. We have to be getting some of those top 50 players in this area, if you go look at it right now, of the top 50 players, I guarantee you there's about 10 to 15 of them right here in this area. Right here. Because they're, they're, they're on Team Durant. They're it's on Team Takeover. Team Takeover. Team Mellow. Team Thrill. Team Thrill. Like, bro, you got to know these AAU programs. You got to know the, the coaches in them. You got to know them from the, from the ground up. Because New you World. Can't st- New World. You can't just start at the last minute like you gotta you gotta have built some relationships and the coaching staff they they can't do it all by themselves that's why you need alumni out here who understand the game understand what georgetown represents and who are talking the talk of the program so that's why it's important for things like coach cooley doing it the way he did it because that welcomes us to be feel free enough but and also, all, Jerome, and, and, we and understand what it's like to be yeah. a student there and know what it takes right. academically to be a student there. So we're Correct. not going to bring you someone yeah. that, that won't appreciate you. Correct. Correct. Um, both of you guys are correct, Jay and um, he, um, But you have to have a coach that allows you to do that. Okay. If you got a hard head ass coach who's going to say, I can do it all by myself, you ain't going to go nowhere. But this man said, on the Zoom, I think it was 79 or 80 players in this. He said he needs help. Yep. Who knows players? I mean, we haven't heard that call before. You know what I mean? So he is allowing us to be a part of this thing, man. So we um we just get together, man, and and, and um help this guy out and support to bring our program back. So. I'm 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 100 percent in, and that's why I told him at the end of that Zoom call. Uh, all I wanted to say is welcome. I'm happy you're here. I'm, I'm at your disposable. I'm at your disposal. I'm here to help you in any way that I can. Being in the high school scene as long as I have, you know, and still involved, understanding the AAU scene, you know, like Jerome said, you got you got four of the top 20 AAU programs in the country right here in our backyard, Nike programs. And then you're talking about New World, who just won the national championship for Adidas. So you got five of the top AAU programs in the country right here in our backyard. So like I said, I'm here to help him any way that I can. You know, whatever whatever he needs from me, all he has to do is reach out and ask. Fellas, uh, all I can say to, for today is absolutely, absolutely, thank you. Uh, it's been great. Uh, one thing I want to say, Wayne, you said it's been since, uh, I think you said Chris Wright and uh, Austin Freeman for, for McDonald's All-Americans, Amidu Muhammad. Uh, was all right now is all American, uh, but I think it's time to close this out uh, with, with the Hoya Locker Room quote for today. Uh, definitely a two quote worthy episode. Uh, the first one, and, and 
one of the things, uh, Kudis, another thing he said at the press conference was, we're going to have the hardest working staff uh, in college basketball. Uh, and if the staff is not working hard, we'll get new staff. Uh, so in that, uh, keeping it in that vein, this is a quote from Sammy Davis Jr. If you want to be the best, baby, you got to work harder than anybody, anyone else. And second quote is from quite possibly my favorite human being ever. It's, it's, it's a battle between him and Muhammad Ali. This is from Frederick Douglass. Allowing only ordinary ability and opportunity, we may explain success mainly by one word. And that word is work, 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 work. Not transient and fitful effort, but patient, enduring, honest, unrelenting, and indefatigable work. Into which the whole heart is put. There is no royal road to perfection. Uh, I think we're on the right road, fellas. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Um, Thank you, guys. Can, Thank and, you guys love you, can appreciate you enough and uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, at some blue and gray event real soon. Real soon. Appreciate y'all. Mark, yeah, all my brothers. Ready. Thank y'all. Appreciate Wayne, it. Gene. <laughs> all right, man. fellas. Love y'all, man. Y'all take care. <laughs> all right. Take care. Thanks, guys. Okay, see y'all later.